Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part number dose of the Mark 85 helmet build. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed part one where we went through and smoothed and prepped and got the helmet ready for paint. We're going to continue on right where we left off. Uh, we're going to get into uh, painting, uh, layers, coats, wait time, masking off, clear coating, wet sanding, uh, refining, getting the helmet looking as realistic as possible, LED eye install, and then final presentation. So uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, there's a lot of content. Uh, if there's anything I missed or anything you guys have a question on, don't be afraid to leave me a comment, but we're gonna get the ball rolling and get this helmet painted. So let's get going. Get ready for part two of the Mark 85 helmet build here on Darkwing Dad. Uh, so again, this is the Rust-Oleum Colonial Red. I'm using all Rust-Oleum paints and primers uh, in this build. Uh, last build was Krylon. Um, so we're using some Rust-Oleum stuff. So all we're doing here is a very, very, very light coat to start. Um, the first couple coats are going to be very light. And then we can uh, lay it on a little bit heavier, but not too heavy. So this is just going to be a very very light uh, misting of a paint job here. All right, so I switched up what I was gonna do. Initially, I was going to paint the whole helmet red and then back tape and do the silver, but if I do the silver, there's less I have to tape off. So if I do the silver first, I can just tape off these small silver sections versus taping off the whole helmet. So, a little bit of change in um, 
direction here. Initially, I was gonna do it all red, and then I'd have to tape off the whole helmet and then do just the silver. I said, Psst, nope. So obviously I don't really need to worry about taping off because the red is heavier too, so it'll cover this no problem. Um, you get too much red on here, it could bleed through the silver, which we don't want. So this is first layer of silver. You're gonna let it sit for about 40 minutes here, do a second layer, and that's really all it needs. I mean, the red didn't really leak through at all. Um, I'm gonna get some of the end portions here where it's covered, but we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna let this sit. I'm unfortunately now not gonna be able to get to painting this helmet red until tomorrow, because I like to leave uh, the silver sit for about 24 hours before you put tape on it. The last thing you wanna get is tape line. So a little bit of a delay, no big deal. I've got some other stuff I can work on, but uh, yeah, getting this guy dialed in with silver here, and then uh, we'll get it taped off, and we'll move on to the red section of the painting. All right, so we're back at it with the helmet. So this is back taping 101. So what we're doing is we are trying to conserve all of this silver, so we have to tape and mask this off, and then um, we're going to paint all this red. So what I do is I start by putting a couple pieces of masking tape on the helmet, taking a plastic razor blade, which kind of gives me the outline that I need. And then you just take a regular razor blade and just very gently go along that seam. And then basically just pull off the excess that you don't need. And it creates a perfect pattern. So something small like this, you don't really need to do multiple layers um, on the edge here. Uh, same thing, uh, it's pretty big. So it's just more or less just finding those little areas that we have to cut off. And just go slow because you don't want your razor blade to slip and slice. Now sometimes what you have to do is lift this tape to get it to lift a little bit. And kind of go back over. I'll probably get some tweezers here just to help snag this. So I'll get some tweezers and pull those off. But essentially what we're going to do is just kind of tape off this whole uh, helmet piece here. And then we'll get ready for um, some red paint. So let's keep getting this thing taped off here.
All right, so here is a uh, painting and rough assembly of the helmet. So uh, we went through, you've seen me mask all this off, and then, I mean, I didn't really document it because it's nothing exciting, it's just spray painting. <laughs> um, but painted all this, obviously um, there's minimal and no clear on some of it. Uh, the only thing that really has clear coat is the face plate, the cheek inserts, and the jaw. I have not put any clear coat uh, on the helmet and on the little lip uh, chin part here. Basically what I'm doing now, um, this is just taped together just to get an idea of uh, structure. There's a couple areas where the paint kind of leached over. Um, it's not really in a lot of parts. Um, obviously this mask is very orange peely. This still all has to get clear coated and wet sanded um, so that will all get cleaned up. Um, but there was only one or two parts on here that I have to clean up, um, right here too, just because some of this mask, this edge here, you're going to see. So all I'm going to do is, um, just kind of clean this up. I'm just going to take the paint and just spray it in a small, uh, like medicine container and then just touch it up with a, uh, precision, um, paintbrush here. So, um, I will take this apart, obviously. Um, before I go and do that, uh, over here, likely what I will do is just get some tape and I'll just tape all the, the red section off and then just kind of fill it in there with the, um, with the silver. Other than that, there's a small section right here where the line kind of goes off. Other than that, there really isn't any major, um, areas that, um, bled through, uh, which is pretty good. Um, there's a couple minor fitment issues. Um, the lip is really tight in the middle, so I may try to sand that down a little bit and then just touch up some paint with the paintbrush. Um, same thing up here. It's pretty tight right here. It's not really causing any fitment issues. It still looks good. There are some gaps, but what I'm going to do when I glue this together is I'm just going to use black hot glue and that way no light shines through. Um, I don't think it looks bad. It's not, um, it's not terrible. You know, there are some areas, this isn't, you know, glued in. So when I glue it, I'm going to heat this piece a little bit and kind of bend it out to eliminate those gaps. But I think everything lines up pretty good. I mean, if you put this thing up on a wall, you know, looking like that, um, it's, it's going to look pretty good. So, and again, it's just my spinoff. It's my rendition. You know, the actual Mark 85 helmet, it's got like a line here. Um, it's actually an opening. I don't know why this particular file didn't have it. It is what it is. I think it still looks cool. So what I'm gonna do here is, like I said, this is just taped together with some painter's tape. Um, I'm gonna kind of take this apart, uh, touch up those little areas, uh, and this was just a um, precision um, kit here. Um, I got from Walmart, and I just used this to um, just touch up little areas that I need to. So I'm gonna kind of pop this apart, I'm gonna touch up those areas. Uh, I'm gonna let it sit. I might do a little bit of sanding here just with some 220 and then put some um, paint back on there just to fill it in, just to get that a little bit more level. Uh, but other than that, we're gonna be, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually put it back together, tape it together, put a couple coats of clear, um, and then just start wet sanding it and everything. So um, coming along nicely. Uh, really, there aren't a lot of areas on the mask that have those uh, those printer lines, I'd say maybe in here is really the only place that has them, and that's just a really hard area to get. Other than that, um, all the other um, lines were filled in. Everything worked out really well. So I'm just gonna get cleaning up all the little nitty gritty stuff here, and then we'll start throwing some clear coat on. All right, so we cleaned up um, the uh, edges, did a little bit of sanding. Um, you can see how that mouth gap is a lot more uniformed. Uh, up here too, I kind of just sanded down these edges. They're not quite as tight now. Um, I've got a couple fingerprint marks that I have to wipe off here, but we're pretty much ready for clear coat. So we're gonna keep it together like this, and the reason why is you don't want your clear coat building up too much in these seams, because then when you go put it together, it's not gonna line up. So. This is how we kind of how we want to have it. So we're going to put probably three or four coats of clear like this in, uh, and then we'll actually hot glue it together. And then once it's all together, we'll start getting into the uh, the wet sanding 
um, and the polishing as one piece versus breaking them up. But overall, pretty good alignment. It's not a final fit. It will be final fitted together and hot glued. So some of these sections here will suck in a little bit more. But uh, overall, we're going to throw some clear coat on. So let's get to it. So uh, we're pretty much on to the uh, wet sanding stage. Um, I've already done a part of the helmet. Uh, I didn't film it. I just wanted to explain what I'm doing. Um, I try not to make every video the same. I don't want this one to be monotonous and repetitive from some of the other ones. In the Iron Patriot video, I know I explained some wet sanding. I have a whole nother video on wet sanding and polishing. I encourage you guys to watch that. It has a little bit more information. This is just showing my process of why I do it. So what I did is I kind of did half the helmet and then the other half I didn't really touch. So obviously on this side here, you can see that this is your this is your typical rattle can paint job. It's usually what it looks like. There's a little bit of compound and polish on here, so it's kind of hazy. But I mean, ultimately, this is what most, you know, paint jobs look like with a rattle can and, and the reason a lot of this happens is because of overspray okay if you have a piece that's just straight flat and you're painting it you're not going to get any overspray because you're just covering that area but on here if you get this perfect you're going to have overspray here same thing with this side if you get this top perfect you're going to have overspray on the, it's it's the over it's the additional spraying of the clear coat so it's basically it's not a direct spray it's almost like a mist that lands on and that's why it makes this look all hazy and not clear now even if you're using an hvlp gun you're painting a car whatever you're painting it can still happen and that's why you know cars have a showroom like finish because they're all wet sanded buffed and polished and that's what i do with all my helmets to get them look that much better so what we've done here is i've done a four stage wet sand i've done a thousand 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and then I've done a three-stage polishing uh, where I basically buffed it, polished it, and refined it with a finishing polish. So um, essentially what we're looking at, this is the before and then that's the after. So you can see just the difference in that light. So this is before and then that's after. So you can see how much clear that's pretty crisp compared to, you know, that. Uh, and it makes a world of difference in your prints. Now, I've also gone over a couple areas that were still kind of not up to my standards. When you wet sand, you want it all basically just smoothed out, okay? So you want all this to look kind of uniform. You don't want that grainy look, and that's what we've accomplished here. So I went and basically did this whole side, and I get kind of graceful with it. You can still see how there's some bits and pieces there on that side. You got to be careful with edges because you can definitely, you know, burn through an edge, damage an edge, which we don't want to do. So I kind of take it a little bit easier. There is a lot of clear coat on here. You can see up on this edge here. But a lot of times when you sit there and get that buffed, uh, you won't even notice it. You know, it'll all kind of level itself out and end up looking like that in the end. Uh, so what we're going to do is get this positioned here, and we're going to buff and polish this, uh, and then do a finishing polish and show you how it looks. Um, I've already done half of the helmet. I kind of gave you a, uh, a half and half, so I'm going to basically show you the process. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using 1,000 grit sandpaper, 2,000 grit sandpaper, 3,000 grit tries at, and then 5,000 grit tries at, and I've got little pieces cut um, for different parts of the helmet. Um, I have the bigger 5,000 grit tries that as well. And those are reuse, uh, sandpaper is essentially all reusable to a certain degree. I try to use it 
as much until it's no longer effective. So that's pretty much my, uh, my motto. So, um, so I'm gonna use some uh, thousand grit here. That other piece is kind of beat up. So I'm gonna start with this. And if you see that nice tight beading, that means you need more, you need sanding. So we haven't sanded this at all. So I kind of like to hold the helmet like this. It's a little bit easier. And you don't want to do, you don't want to put a lot of pressure. You want to put some pressure, but not a ton. And you want to focus more on smoothing this out. So when you start it, you'll hear it. It'll be gritty. It'll be grabbing the paper. Hear how loud that is? We want to get that smoother. Once we start to hear it, that sound go away, we know we're getting it smoother. So I don't like to spend a ton of time with 1500 because it is, or I should say a thousand. Um, if I'm starting off with 1500 or 2000, I'll spend a little bit more time. Um, I just like to get it to where it's not as loud. So all that grittiness is knocked down. Uh, again, your thousand grit, that is how, that's how much, that's the amount of abrasiveness in it. So you wanna be careful on edges and tight little areas because if you go too long or too hard, you could burn right through the clear. If you burn through the clear, you gotta start all over. Or at least repaint it and then clear it. But you can hear, hear how loud that is? Now hear how quiet this is. So that's what we want. And if you want more action, so to speak, I guess, uh, increase your hand speed and decrease your pressure. You never wanna increase your speed and increase your pressure. You'll generate heat and you could potentially burn through the clear coat. And yes, you can do that by hand. So now I'm just wiping this off and you can see that there's still this this little texture here, okay? We're not gonna worry about that too much more with the thousand though. We've kind of smoothed it out. Now what we wanna do is switch to 2000 because we can spend more time with that. And we're basically gonna do the same process. We're kind of stopping like right here. We're, I mean, we're getting the back a little bit, but we'll do that more when we get the back section. But you can see it's getting reduced. The middle, I'm gonna hit a little bit more real quick right now, because that's still pretty heavy. So it's more getting more and more smoother, as you can see. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 3000 grit. We're gonna spend a good amount of time on this. This is really gonna smooth it out and make this all start to look uniform. We can still see a lot of this grittiness here. Watch after I do this here, how much smoother it gets. If you've ever sanded wood or done anything where you've used sandpaper, you understand that when you start off, it chops it up. It gets rid of the deep and heavy defects, but it leaves defects behind. So with each change in sandpaper, you're smoothing, you're refining more and more. And the more work you do with the sandpaper, the less work you have to do with a polisher, essentially. Um, some people like to just do one or two stages of sanding and then let the polisher do all the work. And it really just depends on your experience and you know your substrate. I don't like to do a ton of polishing. I do just enough. Um, polishing generates more heat. Um, you can control more by hand than with a machine to an extent. So. I like to do as much as I can by hand. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit this with 3000 grit. This is a Trizat foam pad. So this is nice because it contours your hand and you can really, you can put a little bit more pressure if need be and it won't be detrimental to damaging or you know burning off any clear coat or anything. So we'll hit this now and watch how much smoother this gets. So now look just from that how much more smoother that is. It's all starting to look uniform. You don't see those little glossy specks. I mean, there's still some, 
and I'm gonna do another round of 3,000, but you can see 3,000 and 5,000 are super, super important because they help get rid of a lot of that. So we're gonna hit this one more time here with the 3,000. I like to do two to three passes with the 3,000. It's less aggressive and you can spend more time and it's not as, um, it takes longer, but there's not as much risk of burning through. So if you just take your time and just monitor the paint, um, you'll get it nice and smooth and get rid of all that orange peel. see that again it's just getting smoother and smoother which is what we want so now I'm gonna take the 5,000 grit and just go over it very lightly so we can now see that for the most part all of that orange peel is gone there is still some but what i like to do is buff and polish this and see how it looks and then if i need to do more i'll come back and do it so what i'm going to do is just wipe this down here get all this water off and i'm going to get this top part uh, buffed and polished so i can see if i need to do any more work so we're going to do that real quick and come back and see how it looks video uh, I certainly enjoyed uh, doing it hopefully there were some uh, helpful tips and tricks in the video uh, pretty much the only thing I didn't cover uh, were the LED eyes which uh, it's really not that difficult um, there is a um, tutorial on that in the Iron Patriot video so if you were curious on how to do the LED eyes uh, just watch that video 
uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I am going to be doing uh, another video on it though, uh, strictly for the eyes um, that actually show how you can put a voltage selector on and basically adjust the brightness of the eyes. It also just shows just how to install them. Um, it's really nothing too difficult. It's pretty easy, but I figured I'd just put a quick video together because usually at the eye point, um, <laughs> I'm wanting just to get the helmet done and put together. We spend so much time prepping these, painting them, wet sanding them, so they basically come out looking like this. Uh, but there she is in all her glory, Mark 85, uh, looking great. Uh, it's going to take its mantle right up there, right above Doctor Strange with all the other uh, prints and, and projects that we have going on here. So. Um, Really, thanks for uh, tuning into the channel though, guys. Like I said, I hope this video helps you. Uh, we have also wrapped up the Mark 50, so I'm gonna be editing those videos. Uh, I've got a ton of videos and a ton of content coming out. Um, it's just my work schedule is very busy. Um, I have so many projects that I do on the side for clients, and so I don't have a chance to record everything, um, but when I do get these bigger projects, I really try to be very informative and in-depth so that way they help you guys so that your helmets can can look like these too so whether they use them for cosplay or just having a man cave kind of like i have they come out looking as best as they can so thanks again guys i do appreciate it um good i guess we're gonna start editing the mark um 50 videos uh, i've got the part one and part two uh there'll be a lot of content in that um you might have seen bits and pieces of them out there already some of the polishing videos and things that i've done so um definitely look for those uh those will that'll be the next helmet video and then um, I'm going to be doing a Captain Rex from Clone Wars, a phase two or stage two helmet or phase two. It's for a client. I'm not really a Star Wars guy. Clearly, you can see I'm more of a Marvel guy, but I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I'm going to be actually doing a Mandalorian helmet for my son, so I'll record that. Um, I'm going to be doing another more in-depth video of how to use resins to smooth out your print. And uh, we're working on War Machine Mark II right now, one of the four uh, custom helmets I'll be doing with the Boston Sports theme paint job that will be painted uh, in New England Patriots colors. So I'm actually working on that today. So uh, look forward for those. All those helmets will look very similar to, uh, to this guy right here. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please click like and subscribe. Uh, if there's anything I covered in the video that you're unsure of, just leave a comment in the comment section. Click that notifications bell to be notified when new videos are up because there will be several. Uh, we do have servo motors part two and there are a lot of things going on. I have completely changed my direction in the full Iron Man suit. We are going with a custom war machine suit because I have not seen a lot of people do that. Uh, a lot, a lot of content. That's probably honestly going to be a 15 part video. Uh, I'm going to be having lasers, actuator cannons, shoulder parts, moving parts. Uh, it is a huge build that honestly will probably take me about 10 months, but there are going to be several sections. Um, I have an extended background in 12 volt and small volt, you know, lower voltage electronics, so I'm really going to put a lot of that knowledge I have, uh, you know, accumulated over the years to that suit, so definitely be on the lookout for that. But again, I'm going to wrap it up. Like and subscribe, um, leave a comment in the comment section, and we'll see you guys next time.